I have a lot of house plants at home, and one of the things that happens to me very regularly is noticing a plant looking at me and begging for attention because it has been overdue for watering. I can see the plant needing water, but had my hearing range been a bit higher, I might act quicker because I would actually be able to hear the plant screaming for water. As our technology improves and we step into the world of science fiction from decades ago, one thing that we still don't see much predictions of is human plant communication or just plant communication in general. But this science hasn't really stopped discovering new things. Experiments for some centuries now have tried to figure out if and how plants communicate, both with themselves as well as with insects and animals that help them survive. We've also been trying to understand the extent of their abilities and whether they can act like they can feel and think. Today, we are closer to the actual answer than ever before. And each small stride we make in understanding plant language, so to speak, is quite small, but actually also quite unexpected and rewarding. So what does a stressed out plant sound like? From this new detailed peer-reviewed study from April from Israel, it turns out that stressed out plants sound a bit like bubble wrap pops or clicks. The team discovered that plants like tomato and tobacco, when they are stressed from dehydration or from damage like cutting of stems, they emit loud popping and clicking noises. But the frequency that these sounds are emitted at is typically too high for our human ears to detect them. However, the researchers believe that these sounds can be probably heard by insects, other animals, especially mammals, and possibly even other plants, which are all in the same ecosystem. Interactions with plants have been recorded previously. We know that plants themselves are capable of moving, which we see exhibited in phototropism or the ability of plants to turn towards light. Experiments have shown how some vines can smell a plant and then grow alongside it, lean in towards it and eventually wind around it and strangle it. Plants even get knocked out by anesthesia like mammals do. Ultrasonic vibrations have been previously recorded in plants and in fact plants even react to sound wave stimulation. It has been used to increase the yield of crops like spinach, rice and wheat in experimental setups as well as to improve plants' immune systems towards insects and other diseases. However, this experiment is the first time that these ultrasonic vibrations have been shown to be airborne, emanating from the plant, which makes it that much more significant as plants might also be using sounds to lure pollinators and insects. To understand whether these stressed plants emit any sounds, the researchers from Tel Aviv University used microphones first in soundproof acoustic chambers and then in open, noisy greenhouse settings. They used tomato and tobacco plants because they are generally healthy and grow quite easily and can be standardized in laboratory settings. They first recorded healthy plants and then they stressed out the plants by not watering them for many days or by cutting their stems and causing physical damage. They did this first in the acoustic chamber with microphones and then repeated this in the noisy outside greenhouse environment. After recording the plants, the team trained a machine learning model to distinguish between unstressed plants, thirsty plants and cut or damaged plants. The results of the experiment showed that stressed plants emit more sounds than unstressed plants and these sounds sound like clicks or pops. A single stressed out plant can emit nearly 50 such clicks at random times in an hour, while unstressed healthy plants are mostly quiet. In this experimental setup, after two days of not watering a plant, stressed clicks climb in loudness and become as loud as human speech and increase in number two. These clicks peak at day five or day six, and then the plant starts to dry up and die and then the clicks also subside. 
How these clicks and pops are produced is as yet unclear. The authors of the paper think it could be because of a process known as cavitation, where there are air bubbles that form and burst inside a plant's vascular system, or the basic xylem and phloem that most of us are familiar with. Additionally, the team also confirmed that these kind of stress responses come from other plants as well, not just tomato and tobacco. They found similar responses in cacti, grapes, and even corn and wheat. The team found that all plants emit sounds when they're stressed, and these sounds are airborne. But what the sounds achieve and to whom they are communicated is not yet clear, and finding that out is the next big step. Scientists now know that stressed out plants emit popping ultrasonic sounds. But who is listening to these sounds? We humans cannot, but we know that many animals, birds and insects can hear in the ultrasound range. So it is possible that these plants might be using acoustic signaling as a mechanism for awareness or protection or even growth. And to understand how, these scientists are now doing follow-up experiments and are studying responses of various organisms, including other plants, to plant sounds. The next objective is to understand the effects of such sounds in completely natural environments. This was indeed a groundbreaking experiment with very unique and interesting findings that will pave the way for many more bits of future research into plant sounds and reactions and how they affect the environment that plants grow in. These include communication systems with neighboring plants and animals. Nowadays, we're learning more and more about how exactly complex simple plants are and our ability to use tech in a more integrated manner is lending us more insights than ever into the plant community.